Hello, my name is Jack Conti. I am here in Wonderfest Studios to spread some physics love. We're going to talk about waves. Waves are freaky, and wave behavior is a big part of what makes quantum physics so weird. Wave behavior also explains sonic booms, rogue ocean waves, and all kinds of strange phenomena, including noise-canceling headphones. Noise cancellation works because of the key wave phenomenon, interference. Let's start with the interference of two waves, because we've got to understand two-wave interference if we're going to understand noise cancellation. Let's choose waves that we can see, like these waves in a super long metal slinky. As the wave moves through the slinky, notice that the loops of metal just move back and forth. The slinky itself isn't actually going anywhere. The wave moves, but the slinky hardly moves at all. So we see that a wave isn't really a thing. It doesn't have mass. A wave is a disturbance in a set of things that have mass. Here, those things are metal slinky loops that can pull and push each other. In sound waves, those things are air molecules that can bump into each other. So, sound is a systematic disturbance in air molecules. The disturbance starts at a vibrating source, say a jet engine, and travels as a wave all the way to your ear. As the air molecules in your ear vibrate back and forth, they make your eardrum vibrate, and then you hear. Suppose that the note you hear is middle C from a synthesizer. This means that the air molecules inside your ear that are vibrating your eardrum are moving back and forth at a rate of 256 times per second. 256 vibrations per second is the frequency of middle C. But suppose you put a headphone speaker next to your ear, that is what headphones are, by the way, tiny speakers, and the headphone speaker also makes the air vibrate at 256 times per second. Then the two sound waves might add. The back and forth motion of the air molecules in your ear, caused by the synthesizer, might add to the back and forth motion of the air molecules in your ear, caused by the headphone speaker, and the sound would seem extra loud. This is an example of constructive interference. But what if the headphone made the air molecules not vibrate back and forth, but forth and back? Then every wave that came from the synthesizer would make the air molecules vibrate back and forth, while every wave that came from the headphones would make the air molecules vibrate forth and back. The waves would be perfectly out of sync pushes would cancel each other out, and the air wouldn't vibrate at all. There would be no sound. This is an example of destructive interference. That's exactly what noise-canceling headphones do. They produce sound that's out of sync with the other sound that's hitting your ear. Every noise-canceling headphone has a tiny microphone that reads the incoming back-and-forth sound wave frequencies. Internal electronics then make the headphone speaker produce forth-and-back sound wave frequencies. As these two opposing vibrations combine in the air near your eardrum, you hear nothing. Well, nothing is what you would hear if the headphones worked perfectly. But incoming sound waves are rarely pure tones. Jet engines produce a ton of different frequencies of sound, so your headphones have a tough time producing all the same frequencies but flipped out of sync. It's sound wave destructive interference, and it's the physics that's making Dr. Bose and Dr. Dre rich.